They're too big. They bounced off my mouth. But they're seasoned. I got, I got enough bounce, I got enough flavor on my lips so that they're perfectly seasoned. Hi, Isaac Toops here at Vice Munchie Studios, cooking up shrimp and oyster po' boys. I like the combination. Uh, the more seafood, the merrier. This is called a traditional half and half in New Orleans. You're gonna love it. First step, we're going to make cane vinegar aioli, or otherwise known as cane vinegar mayonnaise. If you don't like the way I say mayonnaise, tough. First, be very careful with your eggs. Never do something like this. Let's separate four egg yolks. I like to use the shell. You can use your fingers as long as your hands are clean. As long as your hands are clean. The elements of a good po' boy are simple. You have your lettuce, you have your tomato, you have your fried stuff, you have your debris. Beauty and simplicity is a good po' boy. We have our egg yolks in here, and now we're gonna add some cane vinegar. This is a, a product by Steen's Cane Syrup. It has this wonderful cane syrup flavor without having all the sweetness into it. It makes a wonderful aioli. Add some Dijon mustard. This is gonna help bind the egg yolks to the earl. Kosher salt, canola earl. The trick with the aioli is you have to blend this slow at first and then fast later. So you wanna start at a, at a slow drizzle. But this thing is moving so fast, you can actually start to add it pretty quickly. The whole process should, should take about 10 seconds. You see people drizzling this stuff in there, and it takes forever, and it warms up, and there are aioli breaks, and you're done. And if you did it just right, you'll have wonderful, nice, thick mayonnaise. I like it thick. Yeah, I, always, I always lick the mayonnaise spoon. I'm a mayonnaise spoon licker. There's a joke in there. Most po' boys are gonna have just lettuce and tomato on them, and there's nothing wrong with that. They're also gonna use plain mayonnaise, maybe a little dash of hot sauce, and that's how I grew up eating them. I've decided to elevate it a little bit with a tomato and red onion salad, but you can pretty much have anything you want on your po' boy. Some elitists, some purists might give you some flack or whatnot, but screw them. You know, take a little red onion and just really finely julienne it. Take your tomato, and we're just gonna use kind of the, outs the outer petals for the salad. We're gonna save the insides for something later because we don't like to waste. <laughs> we don't like to waste, shut up. <laughs> outer part of the tomato is gonna make a better salad. Inside are better for cooking, so you have that texture. I love different textures in all my food, and a po' boy is no different. And we have a very simple dressing. Salt, a little fresh ground black pepper, sherry vinegar, and horseradish. Just give that a toss. You notice there's no olive oil or uh, canola oil in here. That's because there's plenty of rich, juicy fat in the po' boy already. And this is gonna add some acidity, some crunch, and of course, that nice little horseradishy kick. As a Cajun, I, I come with a kick. I like the, the ethereal sense of horseradish. I like the heat from capsaicin, but horseradish is a different heat. And I, I like that feel of it, especially with seafood. I think they go hand in hand. Really, this is just a good salad. That'll work. All right, let's fry some seafood. So for our oyster and shrimp dredge, we have a little bit of corn flour and corn meal. I like to use two different uh, varieties. The corn flour is a lot more fine. It's gonna really stick to the seafood and the corn meal is gonna give that wonderful texture. Celery salt. Cayenne pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. Last but not least, don't skip this step, popcorn salt. If you were to add kosher salt or even iodized salt, it would all sink to the bottom, but the popcorn salt is so fine, like the corn flour and all the other seasonings, that it will stay emulsified in the powders. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Somebody say whiskey. Would you like some whiskey? Not yet. You add your shrimp and just give them a good hand toss. The shrimp and oysters are pretty wet, so you don't need to do an egg wash or anything beforehand. You can just throw these suckers right in. If they're not, you can add a little bit of water to them, but you really want them to stick and coat well. Other classics of po' boy or would be the peacemaker, which is oysters and cheese. One of my favorites are the New Orleans hot sausage po' boys. It gives me a stomach ache every time I eat one and I still eat them. That's how good they are. Well, vegetarians, there's french fry po' boys, and let me tell you, as good as they sound. Got our oysters. I'm just gonna mispronounce everything today. 
my cat is named Oyster Poor Boy Tubes. No lie. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, that's how ridiculous I am. Poor boys are great for any meal of the day, says the big fat Cajun. But typically, typically most poor boys are eaten for lunch. You know, you don't really go get a brunch poor boy. Wait, hold on, I'm gonna market that. Note to self, brunch poor boy. Let's fry some seafood up. Get your peanut oil to about 350. When dropping seafood in, get real close to it. You never wanna drop it from this height because then you'll get splashed with oil and then you'll get burn marks on yourself and then you'll look like a professional cook or something. I use peanut oil because it's extremely sturdy. You can use several volleys of fried foods in there. And the beautiful thing about peanut oil is your fried food will come out tasting like the food and not peanuts, which is important. Do not use cheap fry oil. The stuff that has all the chemicals in it, I don't abide by those. These are small enough that they only should take a couple of minutes. Don't overcook your seafood. I forget exactly when, but back in the day, uh, poor boys were used to serve the poor guys, the poor workers who couldn't afford lunch. This one guy just started making these just very simple ham and cheese sandwiches, I think, served on French bread, and they were called poor boys. Well, over the years, poor boy got shortened to po' boy, and that's why we have the beautiful and delicious po' boy today to, to serve these this poor Cajun himself. Now, the oysters, being very delicate, aren't gonna take as long as the shrimp, so keep an eye on them. Oh, yeah. Oysters are great. I don't care if you broil them, eat them raw, deep fry them, I love oysters. But admittedly, the first guy to pick up an oyster, look at it, eat it, was hungry. Even though the most delicious thing on the earth, they look like a ball of snot. Remind me not to write food reviews. <laughs> all right, we fried all the good seafood. Now it's time to pull boys assemble. Please don't sue. Now, I don't know about you, but I always travel with French bread. Good New Orleans po' boy bread. However, I got this a couple days ago and it's stale. So, we're going to use some fresher bread, which they have procured for me today. But if you can't get this stuff, please do. So, we have our nice, fresh French bread. Gonna give it a cut. Don't go all the way through. You just wanna wedge that guy open. Do not skimp on the mayonnaise. Make sure it's on every bite, because you want every bite to taste good. Gonna alternate shrimp and oysters. You really wanna load this up too. Should be kind of spilling out. A good, po a good po boy, they're hard to close. You might have to eat a couple shrimp and oysters out beforehand, and that's not a big problem now, is it? Gonna spoon some of our salad on, and then you call it a day. Old fashioned, half and half, good shrimp, Good oysters. And a lot of napkins. This concludes Shrimp and Oyster Po' Boy. Thanks for joining us. If you want the recipe, click the link below. Or is it here? And then the windmill. Oh! Oh, and this is why you don't juggle shrimp next to hot fry grease. <laughs>